So we're going to get into some more very interesting and very important concepts. So you can see now we are slowly building our knowledge base, right? So you have to start to remember each thing. They're related to each other and each one is important. Then we are going to add circulation on top of it and then reach to global warming and how that is affecting the ocean. So each concept here is important that you must make sure you understand. So this uh, process called carbonate buffering is very critical for the ocean because uh, I mentioned very briefly that ocean takes up more than 90% of the global warming energy that's being produced by humans. It also takes up a lot of the carbon dioxide and other substances that humans are producing, uh, like greenhouse gases, right? What is buffering? You can imagine it just means something is buffered, means it's protected, like you buffer the aspirin to be slowly releasing so that it doesn't affect your stomach and so on and so forth. So the buffering keeps the ocean from becoming too acidic or too basic. When I said ocean has maintained its pH at 8.1 or so for more than 100 million years, that means despite all the rain and the rivers and the sea salt being uh, taken out and being put back in and CO2 exchange and so on, ocean is maintaining the uh, pH because it is buffered. How does it work? Precipitation or dissolution of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, I think this is our first uh, chemical formula that we're introducing into the course, but I'm sure you've seen it somewhere. It's basically chalk, right? Limestone, chalk, whatever you want to call it. Calcium carbonate also turns out to be a shell that many of the animals in the ocean uh, use to protect themselves against being eaten and so on. So it's the precipitation or dissolution of calcium carbonate into the ocean that is the main ingredient for buffering the pH of the ocean what prevents the ocean pH from jumping around very fast. Oceans can absorb CO2 from the atmosphere, uh, basically because CO2 is highly soluble in water, which is what allows us to make carbonated drinks uh, in the first place. And that is part of this buffering system. Why can CO2 dissolve and not change the uh, pH too much? We said C CO2 dissolves into water and produces carbonic acid, so why doesn't water become more acidic when CO2 dissolves? Well, that's the crux of the matter here. This figure is very nice. Atmospheric CO2 is coming in. There are various uh, animal species living near the surface, calcite secreting uh, organisms. Uh, we use the term phytoplankton and I also ma mentioned zooplankton. Plankton comes from Greek word planktos which basically means a drifter. They don't ne typically swim because they don't have uh, flagella or uh, gills and uh, ability to propagate themselves. So they are drifters, plankton. Phytoplankton means they use light. Zooplankton means they eat other things. So autotrophs and heterotrophs was another terminology we used, right? So here atmospheric CO2 is dissolving into the water and producing carbonic acid, which is what is in your carbonated Coke and Pepsi. But what happens if you ha didn't have a buffering system, then at some point the, s the system would get saturated and you will have a uh, hard time dissolving more CO2 into the ocean. But the ocean basically keeps moving H2CO3 into H plus ion, which is what gives you the acidification or the acidity, and HCO3 minus, which is the bicarbonate ion. So H2CO3 is split into H plus and HCO3 minus. HCO3 minus is further split into CO3 with two negative uh, charges, which is called the carbonate ion. Okay. So H2CO3, as you can see, the reaction below is going into HCO3 minus plus H plus, which is the H is increasing, so the pH drops, it becomes more acidic, but H plus then combines with HCO3 minus and produces H2CO3 uh, again, which drops the pH, okay? Uh, sorry, which rises uh, the pH. So it's going towards alkaline here, acidic here. So this constant movement of H2CO3 into H plus and HCO3 minus is 
what buffers the system, which is what prevents the pH from changing despite dissolving CO2 and prevents the system from, from getting saturated by CO2 even though CO2 can keep dissolving. Uh, let's add this little bit more detail. Regulation of seawater uh, pH, the buffer capacity. Right? Why is this important? Because if we keep increasing CO2 because of human activities, we want to know whether ocean's buffering capacity will continue to be as high as it has been or whether it will become less buffered and it will begin to acidify it. Right? So these equations are a little bit complicated, so I'll come back to it in the next module. But ocean is buffered. It's a good thing. Helps it maintain its pH at a steady level, which allows many species to evolve, like these uh, calcite-secreting organisms. If they have calcite or calcium carbonate shells and living in water that has a certain pH, that means they are able to remain without getting dissolved. That's very critical. If you move the pH towards being more acidic, that means they will not be able to survive. They will begin to lose their shells. This is the critical part about changing the pH of the ocean for whatever reason, because of CO2 increase by human activities by for or by some natural processes. This is why the pH of the ocean being nearly constant is important for life, corals, calcite secreting organisms and so on. So we'll continue this uh, important concept with the equations I just showed uh, in the next module.